because I do 1,300 crunches and sit-ups four times a week. What's a, 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 a dos? Can you translate for us? Winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Ernie Ellis. Well, I don't really know the best way to start this thing, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump into it. Um, this is serious. Uh, this is this is serious amateur hour right here. So um, <laughs> I guess we can forgive ourselves. I feel like a, a 40 year old podcast virgin um, <laughs> making my way through the labor of uh, information out there. But um, this is our first crack at a uh, actual podcast. So welcome to Desperate for a Shank, I think is what it's been called, Hoff. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, compared to the other alternatives, uh, <laughs> I think Desperate for a Shank was our gut feel. So, you know, let's go for it. I was certainly, trying to remember it certainly that, applies to me. I was trying to remember the origins of that name, and I think it was during lockdown um, when uh, we were just so desperate to play any sort of golf, um, regardless of the quality of the golf. So I think that was kind of the origins. Well, and then I, it's I, been... uh, I thought it was a bit of a double entendre play on words, uh, desperate for a wank, but uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think and, there may and have our been. Pod, our uh, podcast there may have just been became. Some Need it need needs a thing now, an age restriction thanks to that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go back and scrub that. So, <laughs> so maybe I'll just go around. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got myself, it's Terence, otherwise known as T, Big T, uh, Carl the Hoff. Yeah, boy. Can say something, Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm uh, Carl the Hoff. <laughs> Uh, the worst golfer out of the three, um, but my knowledge of brands is right up there. So I think my my, my skills are in buying golf equipment, not not actually using it. Um, so that's probably the best intro to to my my input here. The only the only person I know who can name exactly which pro is playing what equipment around about 150 professionals. So. Um, and that's, five uh, that's a real feather in your cap. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, Goodness I appreciate knows that. why you, why you uh, retain that information. But uh, <laughs> someone's got to do it, and I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> well, maybe when the budget comes along in, in a few years, when this podcast takes off, you can send me to the PGA merchandise show in, in uh, Orlando. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Requests for budget allocation already. Mm. And, uh, and Jacques. Let me throw it, throw it over to you. Welcome, Jacques. Yeah, thank you. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. This could be the, the one and only that we, we dig out in 10 years' time. And <laughs> laugh Have a laugh. At, uh, <laughs> at our attempt. But, um, yeah, thanks for, for letting me be part of this. Um, I'm a slightly better golfer than Hoff, um, but still not by much in terms of professional standards. Um, yeah, uh, I would say that my, my golf knowledge is probably better than some, but worse than most. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can at least provide some ham fisted insights, but we'll see how that goes. Carl, I'm going to start with you. It's obviously one of the most hotly anticipated events of the year. It's Everyone's talking about it. Uh, it's dominating social media. It's at a world-famous golf course. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the Live Golf event that happened at Orlando. Um, <laughs> tell, us, tell us about it. Being our, our local uh, Live uh, correspondent, tell us what happened. What do we need to know? Well, look, I mean, I can tell you one thing. The coverage is improving. Um, I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed their events from the outset. Um, it was a little bit cumbersome to start with, but uh, realistically, their coverage is certainly improving 
uh, event by event. Um, I mean, I think the the biggest takeaway is is obviously the team element. Everyone's talking about it, but Everyone. it is it is. Uh, it is <laughs> yeah, Pat, Patrick Reed, Sergio Garcia, all of them. Uh, that's everyone. Um, but I mean, it is it is it is it is gathering some momentum. I'm not going to lie. I mean, um, if you look at this week, this this last event in particular, I mean, Brooks Kepka won it, but his team didn't win it, and um, I mean, if you look at, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, of team talk, uh, or torque. Um, torque. <laughs> I understand why they kept on saying torque. It, it truly is talk. Well, I mean, they, they mostly South Americans, uh, I suppose they're entitled to their opinion of it. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, they celebrated pretty hard. So, um, looked like decent crowds, um, obviously could be better. But um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm impressed by it. I think from a you know looking at what's ahead perspective, um, I mean, probably the two takeaways are are Brooks Kepka obviously winning it, um, which is you know probably a a significant uh, interest, bearing in mind uh, what's coming up next weekend. Um, but also maybe a lack of form from from Cam Smith, who's probably the biggest. Hope on the live the live side to to take a victory away next weekend, um, but yeah, lack of event. Um, when when uh, when you say the coverage has improved, what 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 are you talking about? What what aspects are? I, I haven't watched. I, I think they I have just, maybe they, watched ten minutes the whole year of of live. Yeah, well, like, probably a good ten minutes. Um, uh, it's, it's I think a, it was uh, in, in the cave, the cave bunker in uh, in My- Mayakopa when they uh, <laughs> did that fly through with the drone. That was about all I watched. Look, I mean, they've got some lack of things with the putting. Um, some of the what do you call it? You the you the RT guy? What do they call it CGI or whatever it is. Um, it's, yeah, is far more advanced than the PGA Tour. Um, their their scoreboard was pretty difficult to, to follow and pretty big took over most of the screen when they started so that's sort of been refined a lot easier to um to to sort of track the action um and again with the team thing they've got they've you know before they sort of brought it up every now and then whereas now it's, it falls forms part of that banner um so it's yeah. it's, it's super easy to follow like the live action um, together with what's happening with the teams, um, the commentary. I mean, it's not great. Um, it's a little bit over the top, especially the the on course uh, people. Um, but it's still, I still think it's better than the PGA Tour's commentary, which is like you know, put everyone to sleep stuff. Um, especially the continuity commentator that oak that oak wrecks <coughs> me every time. Um, the, the 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 one we get on the international feed, yeah, yeah. So um, I worked it out. I worked it out a while ago. He's actually the yeah. He's the PGA Tour live guy. So he's he's commentating on the PGA Tour live feed, which means when their commentary feed stops, we pick up their PGA Tour live. Um, which oh is my pretty, god! Which imagine is watching horrific. that. Imagine watching that full time. That's no. That'd be like listening to Kenny G uh, all over again. Yeah. So I think um, overall, like. I think there's some pretty significant takeaways from that live golf weekend going into the Masters, um, which makes things super spicy. I find it interesting how um, they, they, they definitely overdo like, the media and stuff around it. Yeah. For sure. Um, I mean, look, personally, I, I really battle to, to watch it. it, it, it it's, it's almost too frenetic. I, I battle with the shotgun <laughs> start part of it. Um, the only really time I've been drawn into watching it was during that team match play event. Um, yeah, I, I just, I just match play, match play rules. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I mean, I, I think, yeah. I think if they, if they lean into some of that stuff a bit more, I, I battle with the everyone on the course, forty-eight people at the same time. It's, it's. I know we, we, you want to see like more golf sometimes on on the PGA Tour, but like it's almost too much. Um, and I, I battle with with them being on complete you, you have got no concept of the flow of a golf course like um 
you know, this guy's on 17 and then he's on three and it's, it's, it's well, well, I think the, the, yeah. their coverage is coming along with that because they sort of tell you how many holes, you know, how many, when they, when they go to a guy, how many holes he has left. So it almost becomes like irrelevant what hole he's on, whether it's yeah. eight, 13, 16, because yeah. it'll say 11 holes to go, 12 holes to go, yeah. whatever the case may be. So they're pretty good with that, but yeah, no, I mean, I get you. It is quite but frenetic. They, they, they almost need to lean into that a bit more with, with like, who cares what hole number it is, really? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Don't don't tell me it's hole three because that means nothing. Like that that doesn't mean anything to me. Like in, in the greater scheme of it, but um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, man, I, I I was just I'm just actually on the Live website now, and it says Kepka makes history in Orlando, which is uh, yeah, first two time winner. Is it, a little bit over the top. <laughs> first, first person who's won twice, like absolute, like absolute legacy going on there. Look, I, I would love, I would love to see them lean into like more of a a college golf approach and keep the fifty-four hole event, but but do like a, a match play playoff on the fourth day on the Sunday. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think oh, that would be I, sick. I think that would be like a um, totally bring quite a lot of spice to it. So th- that would be good, but. But yeah, I think they they definitely improving, um, and I mean, from all the changes we're seeing on the PGA Tour and all of that, I think they they definitely making their mark. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say my t- I didn't watch any of it, but my my takeaway when I looked this morning, I saw Kepka had one. I would say that that Liv kind of needed that results like. Mm. Um, it was it was a bit of a tough start with uh, a couple of like really random guys winning and uh, their stars basically haven't been performing like at all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they needed one of their big guns to 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 win and I think it it's it's helped them also leading up and it's also made going into the Masters now super interesting. Obviously, um, yeah, I saw. Patrick Reed was up there as well. Um, so yeah, a couple of guys, a couple of or guys who've played well at Augusta, who yeah, who may be rounding into a bit of form, which is cool. Um, Jock, what's your take on Liv? Short, short take. Yeah, no, I think you've you you guys have both covered it. I did. I thought it was a little bit awkward, you know, when um, you've got old Muno's missing the, the final putt to win it and his teammates running out and spraying him with champagne. <laughs> <laughs> seemed a bit... <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's they, amazing. I think the, 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 yeah. So they were, they were celebrating the team, <laughs> the team victory and spraying the runner up. So yeah, that was a bit strange. Um, yeah. I think that's great. Hoff, they've, they've done away with the microphone in the, in the hole. Cause that was super disgusting. Oh, yeah, that we, that we, was we, flipping awful. That was disgusting. You cut the loudest ball hitting the bottom of yeah. the hole. It's not even in sports when they've got like a ball at the bottom of the hole. <laughs> that metal, um, that metal tint. Yeah, that, <laughs> that thing's horrific. Um, but yeah, otherwise I agree. It's interesting to see that the big names are coming to the fore um, at this stage just before the Masters. So it's it, it would be interesting to think, to, to say, well, you know, are, the, are those big name players throwing their true colors to say, look, it is a bit of a hit and giggle until you know it, it needs to be um ramping up towards playing properly for the majors um it'll be interesting to see that because because yeah i think you'll you'll probably find that they they go out and and sort of hit around where they can and then you know peak for the majors which which sort of sh- shows what their true colors were and going over there anyway but i suppose all of the big players do that on the on the various tours um and then yeah, I think just just from the last live tournament that I watched, I also flicked it on, and and one of the most hilarious things I saw was, you know, the the live golf tent that they've got on some of the greens where they're just pumping house music yeah, at Sergio. That's the worst. Trying to <laughs> trying to chip it in. Oh, uh-huh. you know, yeah. Run Sergio Garcia, who normally gets irritated with any slight distraction, is now trying to do a high high pressure chip apparently with house music pumping in the background. So I quite enjoyed that as well. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with Terence. I've sort of um, caught caught the the highlights and, and watched the end of a couple. Um, but but it does. I, I quite like it. I like I, I like it a lot less because it's not coming to South Africa. 
I think they would have won a lot of um, fans here. I think there were a lot of people in South Africa who were ready to get behind the product if it truly was a world tour. Um, but you know, when you when you look at the Instagram feed, when they're saying, "Well, who's gonna? Where would you like live to come next?" and there's 50 replies in a row saying South Africa, mm-hmm. and you know, is, there's not there's not a single peep about why they're not coming here or what the plans are to come here in future. So I think just speaking to a lot of the guys that that I play golf with. I think they probably lost a lot of South African fans by by not coming here, um, because yeah, let's be honest, we're getting a lot of DP tour events now, but it's like a feeder to a feeder to a feeder. So it would be nice to see the big names in South Africa. Yeah, I mean, i I don't think I don't think I don't think you can rule it out at this stage. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, I. You know, from a from a world tour perspective, and also f- from a time zone perspective, um, to me it would make a, a whole bunch of sense to have a tournament here because you effectively tap into. Essentially, it would be on like kind of in the morning, uh, in the biggest market, which was obviously the US. Um, but then you've got the whole of the UK. Um, I think the UK there's a reasonable market there for live. Um, so time zone wise, it feels like South Africa would 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 be good. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. Eh? I <laughs> I think I wrote I read about this, um, but the a live golf event at Sun City would be like it feels like that's a good match. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah. Do you not think it would be better if suited to stay in City, which is <laughs> I feel like to, to live golf even more. Lots of new man. <laughs> Like building a golf course from scratch, like yeah, you know. The thing is, else be there. the thing is that uh, I mean, Sun City is basically a live golf event now. I mean, we've been to the Ned Bank Challenge a few times, and I mean, all of those tents in the background. The only thing that they've got right that live haven't, and you mentioned it there, JDV, is the pumping music, which you can hear on the live coverage. They they've got that very right right at at Sun City, but I mean, it is an absolute perfect event i mean that caddies get treated well you know i think ned bank's coverage through the european tour or through the dp world tour now is just sliding backwards because of you know um what's happening with the dp world tour and this whole strategic alliance sort of not really doing anything for them um so it'd be lacquer if ned bank jumped ship and signed a deal with live i think they would get massive massive support from south africans um but I mean, going back to this weekend, I actually think the Oaks might be a little bit undercooked for the Masters. Um, I saw uh, Brooks Kepka say something online where, you know, he said, "I, I wish the schedule was a little bit, you know, front heavy um, to get them to get them ready." But um, yeah, I think it will create some spice if they if they can get a winner this weekend. I tell you what, um, going back to Sun City, I played a, a I played. <laughs> We had a. I played there last year, and we had a shotgun. It was a shotgun start, and let me tell you, you don't want to be teeing off on like the, like the sixth hole or no, something. Long walk. Walking out there at Sun City, but I guess uh, I guess they find a way to to work around that. But uh, yeah, I, I think it. Uh, you know, I think there's. I I, I think it's, it's 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 yeah. I think it's potentially could happen, but. Uh, Okay, we've 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 given that probably a little more attention than it than it deserves, but um, <laughs> that's cool. Um, okay, PGA Tour did uh, did that uh, hit your guys' radar this this weekend at all? Texas Open, the Valero Texas Open, TPC San Antonio, Corey Connors. Uh, I think it's his second time he's won it, and I think it's only the second tournament he's won. Is that right? It sounds right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. Yeah, I believe you. Did, did, did you guys catch any? Did you watch any uh, any highlights no. or anything live? I, I, watched, I watched zero of this. Um, I must say, I, yeah, I, I struggle to watch PJ Tour at the moment, apart from like uh, the quickest highlights package you possibly can or a few a few clips that they put on uh, Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's like I think I'm conditioned that when I hear those commentators. My hand just, you know, finds the remote and I change the channel. Yeah. But uh, but I looked I looked at the I looked at the leaderboard. Um, I mean, the only the only sort of point of interest was are there any South Africans that did well? And I see the what's his name MJ 
der Füll, der Füll, ja, also der Füll, ja. Yeah. Uh, he did decently, so he, but not enough. And, and of course, most of the American focus is on Ricky Fowler, who came pretty close at the match play um, to getting through to the rounds that he needed to. And I think he came 10th, is that right? But again, I don't think it's enough to, to see him through to, to Augusta. No. Yeah. Um, I found uh, with, with the PGA Tour, actually, uh, okay, look, this is not a, one of the, whatever, designated elevated events, um, obviously. But um, but I found with, with those events, actually the best time to watch is like when they do the featured group stuff, mm. on like a Thursday and Friday. Because then you're dealing with that, uh, I think, I guess it's PGA Tour Live or, or whatever it is, um, much more dynamic kind of commentary team. The, the kind of Saturday, Sunday stuff is, yeah, is, is difficult. And then obviously the time zone, like, it, unless it's like an East Coast, like, New it's York. Like, uh, the players, champs, or whatever, like uh, Florida stuff, the time is like you're, 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 you're going till like two in the morning. Yeah. You know? I mean, as we know with the Masters, it's you're looking at a one or two a.m. kind of uh, thing. But uh, the the one thing I did watch a little bit of this um, this weekend, um, and uh, I don't know if you've seen this golf course, but it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty wild. It's um, it's it's got a bit of a Sun City vibe about it um, because yeah, the resort, uh, there's like pretty. It is a resort, yeah, but. Um, the, the the bush there is is a bit like Sun City. It's like you you the guys go in there and uh, like they don't come out. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is the place where Kevin Na famously shot a sixteen um, yeah, like ten that. years ago on one of the holes. Um, if you've never watched that, that is a very very good YouTube watch. Um, if you just YouTube Kevin Na shoot sixteen, it's it's there's there's a there's a video which follows him the whole time and it's, it's seriously quality. Um, the Oak has absolutely no idea how many swings he's had. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of like sound of wood breaking and, uh, the commentators like lose him at one point in the bush. It's, uh, it's probably the best thing that's happened at that course. I would say. Oh, I was going to say it's probably um, the best the- thing that's happened to Kevin now in terms of public <laughs> as well. <laughs> The only other, the only other thing I noticed was Hideki, a bit of a Hideki sighting. I think he, he, uh, I, I think he finished in the top fifteen or something like that. He looks like he's striking the ball pretty well. Um, obviously, that's always interesting uh, leading up to the Masters. Um, yeah, I just think uh, the Masters is a place where the guys who've won they seem to, regardless of what form they're in, they seem to be able to find it when they get there. So. Um, it is interesting seeing Hideki uh, maybe showing something. Uh, Sunshine Tour. Okay, nobody really gives a shit about Sunshine Tour. We don't have to uh, cover that. <laughs> especially not the especially not the limp <laughs> uh, Okay, I did write this. Uh, Ryan Van Velzen won the limp Classic at Euphoria. Of course. Um, have you guys played... Have you guys played there? Euphoria? Mm-mm. It's a negative. Okay. No, I haven't played there either, but um, I was looking at it online um, earlier. It's uh, it's proper Bushfelt course. They 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 have a um, – it's a, such a weird uh, housing estate development. They have a cable car in the housing estate. So I guess they have like one part of the, the, the property that's like right on top of a mountain, um, which is really difficult to drive to. So they have a cable car from like the top of this mountain where there's properties literally straight into the clubhouse of the golf course, which is yeah. pretty sick. Um, yeah, I, I, didn't, pretty... I didn't know that. What, uh, does anyone know what that course is rated in South Africa? Yeah, it's right up there. Really? Um, uh... Like top top 30? Yeah, yeah, um, but but just just talking about those those uh, cable cars. I know that like Wellington, just off the topic in Wellington, New Zealand. I know that there's a bunch of single houses on the mountains there that each have their own cable car to get to their house. That's like part of the way that the guys get there. So it's quite cool to see that it's all that. Yeah, I I honestly didn't. 
I'd never seen this before before I googled it today. So uh, just hope it doesn't run on Elix. Those cars aren't getting. Yeah, that's actually a good point. That'd be imagine you like desperate to play golf and then it's like load shedding. Fuck. <laughs> exactly. 55 it's currently rated 55 so. i thought it would be higher um horses yeah it, lo- I, I, it looks like there's a shitload of bunkers on this course I, that's one thing i noticed it looks like it had been bombed um there's just craters everywhere so but it looks interesting though um i think we need to maybe put this on our on our radar sometime mm. it's the sort of place i think you go and you stay at and play like a couple of times like a Highland Gate sort of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're going to move much from here. Um, awesome. Uh, guys, did you... Uh, have you guys watched anything of the uh, Augusta National Women's Amateur? Is this anything that uh, you guys followed? I saw... I, did you see I saw, anything I, about I saw it? The win- I saw it was a playoff between two, two Americans. But um, I haven't... I didn't, I didn't watch anything on it. But... I'm I'm quite surprised that they haven't, um, you know, pressed the green button on 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 playing a women's major there. To be honest. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, well, for, for 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 if you don't know what it is, it's basically they. I think they started it like four years ago, 20, and it was like Augusta's way of 2019. Yeah, it was like their way of. Uh, I don't know, maybe writing some old wrongs or whatever, but yeah, they I guess they'd had some pressure to have a, a women's tournament there and they decided to have an like an AM tournament there. Um, but <laughs> what, what I find really funny is that they only play one round of the tournament at, at Augusta. Um, yeah. They only play the final round there. So the first two rounds are played like out of, like at some other course. Um, and then they have a break where they, <laughs> then allow the players who like made the cuts to then play a practice round at Augusta and then they play the final round, which is oh, weird. That's pretty weird. Um, <laughs> but I guess the, I guess they can do what they like. Um, it's like, we'll only let you <laughs> inside for like a little bit, you know, like, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But anyway, this, 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 this girl who won, she's, uh, I, I, I haven't heard much about her, but apparently she's got kind of like a Tiger-ish amateur resume so far. So she's apparently pretty much won everything that you can win as an amateur. And she's like 20. So Rose Zhang. Um, so yeah, could be, could be a big, uh, big future. Uh, there was also <laughs> South African who finished in the top 10 as well. Hmm. Caitlin McNabb, she's a college college player. So that's cool. Cool for us to have someone flying the flag. All right. There's a, there's a very cool um, uh, YouTube uh, episode from the thing up, guys, about Rose Zhang and her college. I think it's the the, the Stanford uh, uh, ladies golf golf team. Yes. Um, so, so they do follow her and, and a couple of the teammates for a week, and I think, I think you know the, the main standout. The reason they did that video was for Rosang. So, so I know that they were were rooting hard, but it was also cool because uh, having watched that, you know, and then you know trying to follow it. Although they didn't have any of the highlights when I looked um, on SuperSport, I'm not sure if it just hadn't been put up yet. Uh, but I know that sh- she has been struggling um, at Augusta. And, and again, just to go to your point, Hoff, it's a bit sad that, you know, if you're a pro golfer, so if she turns pro now, well, that's, that's, that's her chance at competitive golf on Augusta. So it does seem like a bit of a, a, bit of a sad thing that there's no pro- professional women's golf at, at Augusta. But not, but not a shock either, as, as Terence says. I mean, they're pretty, pretty behind the eight ball with uh, advancements. Although I saw that, I don't know if it was a joke. I don't know if you guys saw it, but they invited Carl Berkshire to to the ceremonial start. Was that a joke? <laughs> Which start sure, the, of the Masters yeah, this week? Yeah, I don't know if that's a joke, but I, uh, I saw it. I saw it. Uh, that uh, sounds like that sounds like April Fool's joke. Oh my goodness, that's a hundred percent right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that would be him. That's actually a very that's a very good segue because uh, because uh, the next 
The next item I have to, to talk about is, is Mr. Gary Player, one of the famous ceremonial starters. Um, I'm assuming you guys have heard about his uh, controversial uh, order whines moans about augusta this over the last like week or so So i saw you said that um it's very sad that he doesn't get to play um and has to ask permission and all that but i, I also i also saw his his comments about the order of events that uh, or the 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 ranking of majors that he, he he put online which created quite a lot of controversy as well with masters being in, in fourth so, so I, I, I got his, uh, I've got his quote here. So he says, after all I've contributed to the tournament and been an ambassador for them, I can't go and have a practice round there with my three grandchildren without having to beg a member to play with us. And there's always some excuse. I was just, I found that really funny. Like, imagine all these members going, like, messaging each other, going, fuck, like, Gary's, like, messaging me, like, like I don't want to play with him. You know, like. <laughs> I saw most. I saw most uh, of the responses online though were also about his uh, his son. You know, him holding a grudge against yeah. Augusta because of his son. Well, that's the thing. Is yeah, I mean, he hasn't really covered himself in glory. Well, his family haven't uh, certainly. Um, and then <laughs> he says, "There's no golfer who's ever had a tougher life than oh, I have." Goodness great. I've won more tournaments than any man alive. I've won more national opens than Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, and Arnold Palmer put together. I've done remarkable things. I mean, for fuck's sake, like this guy, just this is our this is our flag like flag bearer for South African golf, you know. Um, the gift, the gifts that just keep on giving. Really tough. Eh? Gary Blair. Yeah, and I, 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 he's not going anywhere. Like he's just gonna keep, just gonna keep swinging. Um, he is he is brilliant though. Like if you if you I mean, it is pretty classic that just before Masters Week he goes out there and and makes an announcement to say that he ranks at the worst major of the lot. Yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty ballsy thing to do. Yeah. Look, uh, apparently Jack Nicholas actually has the same opinion, uh, which is which is kind of interesting. Um, and basically, what they're saying is like. Because I think also you have to remember that like we we know the Masters like as it is now like but when they were playing in the sixties like the Masters only didn't have as much like uh, legacy you know um, whereas like the, the the British like the British Open and the US Open and even the PGA had been going on for like infinitely longer so to them those were actually like bigger like bigger tournaments you know. So, I, I mean, I, I kind of get that. But the timing is, is just classic. You know, it's kind of like shooting up a flare, like, look at me. Um, yeah. But like, his, yeah, like, like all the stuff that his son did on the tea, on the tea box. And it's, yeah, it's just, I, I just, as a South African golf, like, fan, I just like, I just like cringe. Yeah, I cringe, yeah. like, Every, it's just, we just, it, it, we just don't have it, any good. I mean, Trevor Immelman is basically feels like our only, like, shining star as a golf like stakeholder at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Is he still the annual starter with the, uh, with, with, with all of yeah, those comments? Is. I mean, yeah. I, I imagine that the members are probably too no, thrilled is. about, you know, him be putting a big dog turd on their tournament and then standing up and doing the, the first And I guarantee deal. after he hits the ball, he'll do that kick that he always does. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you on that one. So, James. he's, he's, Cringe yeah. factor 101, that oak. But but yes, you got to give him credit. He's he's remained somewhat relevant in the news for decades. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a tough flag bearer to watch because I mean, if if you speak to like our parents' yeah. generation, they're like, oh, what a wonderful man and all of that, and they can't understand how yeah. our generation actually don't see him that way. They see him as like almost an embarrassment. Um, not what he's achieved, but like how he how he acts. Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, cringe is the only only word that describes it best. Honestly, I, like this, I I find the whole ceremonial starter thing like like I I, I hate yeah, it. Like I I think it's so it I'm so over it. Like I I I just kind of want these guys to like not fade into obscurity, but like. We know what their records were, like they were great, like fantastic, like keep 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 it like almost like mythical, you know? 
but like to roll those dudes out at every every year at the masters and you got gary doing like all these interviews and that it's just like oh i find it super painful and like i i really really hope tiger never does this sort of stuff it's it's Um, super cheesy it's super cheesy yeah I don't know if Tiger would. I mean, Tiger's got a little bit of a history with those oaks. Um, I mean, obviously, he's won the event in the most epic, you know, fashions. Um, But, I mean, when he did go through his multiple affair uh, saga, uh, it it was the Masters who came out and, you know, made a statement that he needs to win back their support in that, which I think was pretty uh, irrelevant. Um, So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I I hope he doesn't go that route. That would be... That would be awful. So, so I thought, firstly, I thought you said, I don't know if Tiger Woods, which I thought was quite a good pun, Mark, but I think you made it intentionally. Uh, and then, uh, excuse my ignorance, but what, what happens once they play that ceremonial hole? Do they, do they just tee off and then someone goes and gets their ball and things carry <laughs> on going? Or do, do they finish the hole? I mean, Gary could jump in with his grandkids on the set. I, I, I could see him a, doing that. It's like, just, just a tee shot. Him. It's just a drive. That's it. It's... it's yeah, so, it's, so, so, it's TV it's time, man. It's like extra, just some extra quirky thing that the Masters have. Um, but the Americans love that I stuff. I mean, they you've, do. Got, yeah. you've got all the, the members there and, you know, the cheesy commentary mm. and build up to... The green, the green jackets. The green jackets, uh, you know. <laughs> the greenies. What's his name? Fred Ridley or whatever with his little intro. It's, yes, I mean, I... Yeah. Whatever, whatever the yeah. start time is on Thursday, just add half an hour to it and join at that point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely skipping it. Um, okay, so what's, what is your – so this, re- master, this Masters rank thing, um, what would, how would you – what would be your rating of the, 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 the majors? Let's say from, as, a TV, as a TV product. Who, me? What's, what's your favorite? Yeah, what's, Carl, Huff, what's um, yours? Oh, I th- for me, for me, it's the open first, um, and I think I'd go as far as to say that most non-Americans would probably go open first, um, and and I think there's so many factors to it. I mean, history is one of it, um, one of the factors. Uh, the toughness of the golf courses, I think they've let it slide a little bit with toughness, like of late. I mean, growing up watching at Carnoustie Oaks used to he used to be like one oak under par, you know, he was the winner. Um, but I, I love like the adverse conditions most years because the ball the ball's going too far bro. yeah that too um, <laughs> but I mean the other thing that, yeah. that as a South African obviously there's more South Africans that, that usually qualify because of the, the number of spots up, up for grabs on other tours um, but yeah. I mean a, a huge one without a doubt has got to be you know TV times I mean you can sit and watch the final round from start to finish you know, with the sun still up yeah. here, which is, which is epic. But I think the Masters is a close second. Um, for me, those two are quite far ahead of the rest. Um, and then in third, the US Open. Um, and then in a, in a very, very, very distant fourth is the PGA Championship. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I can't really uh, challenge that. But I, I would say... Um, I, yeah, definitely the open for me. Uh, obviously, the time zone, and and it's what's amazing is you know this is I guess how Americans consume their golf. We we get to do it like once a year, like the best tournaments of the year, you know. Yeah. And this is what they're doing on a on a on a weekly basis. Um, except they they have like terrible TV coverage. Um, but uh, I think the PGA Championship has got a bit better in the last couple of years 100%. um there's some kind of interesting things about that championship and that you, you you've got like regular like pros like from like the course down the road who can like kind of play their way into it um that's always kind of a, a quirky part of that thing um but yeah those two definitely yeah open masters those two how about you Jacques? yeah i completely agree with what half says about the open i think i think being able to watch it live um without you know, ruining your work day the next day is, is helpful. Um, then I would probably agree and say the Masters second. Um, and then I, I'm going to have to put Africa's major in there at third <laughs> and have the net back at third. 
God, I didn't even I didn't even put that in the uh, in the questions, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, my apologies. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, then PG, uh, then probably the players, and then the PGA after that. So that would be, and and you could probably put the dull match play in before the, the oh, yes. PGA as well for me. I, I love Although, Jacques. To be fair, Jacques just changing the multiple choice options. Yeah, just. Uh... <laughs> It's a story for another day, but you can definitely make one of those majors uh, match play. I think that would be epic. Yeah, I think the PGA could could the PGA used to be match play back way back in the day. Um, it was yeah, a match play be- major, and um, I thought it'd be so sick. Well, I mean, the like, the US amateur uh, yeah. is is stroke play followed by match play. So, I mean, even if they did something like that, because I know from a TV co- coverage point of view, match play is 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 tough um, uh, yeah. for the Americans to 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 handle. Um, so maybe like a stroke play match play combination would be great. But I mean, it would be even better if they could scrap the PGA to a uh, PGA Championship and uh, make it a roaming major. You know that people people bid for around the world. So you could have it in South America one year, maybe South Africa, Australia. That would be absolutely epic. Well, have. Well, if that was the case, then we'd be having it in Saudi Arabia one year, and then Abu Dhabi the next year. <laughs> hey, look, I'll I'll take that. Any anything that gives us gold in a, in a, in a, uh, in a Mecca time window, time zone. is uh, mm. is, is yeah. you know I'm 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 all in for that. You know, I've always thought someone like like a big company with a with a global footprint, like an Emirates or something, needs to to just create one. You know, um, I mean, I would even say if it was for example, the PGA Championship, like have it in America every other year, you know, US gets it one year and then, I don't know, Buenos Aires, then America, Joburg, whatever, just give us, give us something, you know. Yeah, and you know what would be sick about that would be if you play, then it, it would be match play because the, the with match play, the, the actual course you're on doesn't really matter that mm. much. You know, you're not worried about protecting par and that sort of stuff. You're you're playing matches, so um, yeah. Look, it's not going to happen. No. Um, the PGA, but uh, it's it's always nice nice to dream. I do think there's a bit of a shift happening, like just in terms of the, you know the power around um, uh, you know the, the golf where where the golf centric uh, public are. I think live is. Liv is challenging that, and it's obviously pretty obvious with all the international players that have gone to live that um, that people are like people outside of the US are kind of a bit kind of cut fall of having to watch like you know the, the the good old PGA tour all the time, you know. And the 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 the, the Europe you know the European tour is unfortunately has lost its um, lost its magic a bit, so. Um, I, I think this upcoming live event in Australia apparently is going to be pretty mad. I've heard uh, I've heard it's it's sold out, and uh, Australians are very fired up um, sports culture. So I, I I'll I'll be tuning into that one. I think um, if there's any that I'm tuning into this year, it'll be the live Australia. Um, so Terry. So, Terence, based on, on, on all of our conversation about trying to find a time zone that we can actually watch it in, you're now going to watch the Australian <laughs> one, which is like just as bad as American time frames. <laughs> yeah, so th- I, I, I seem to remember, though, when they had the President's Cup in, in Australia, they... Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It was like later... Yeah, it wasn't bad for, for South Africa. The, 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 t- the time zone wasn't that bad. Um, it was watchable. Yeah, um, look, I think I think it'd be early in the morning because what's it? They they squeeze it all into that four hours, so you're probably gonna have to wake up at four in the morning to catch <laughs> the live event. But I suppose with three kids, you <laughs> you're gonna be thrilled for that. Get some live uh, live viewing at that stage. Yeah, you could be joining me. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's not forget. Um, okay, let's 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 jump into the masters a bit more here. Um, uh, I kind of uh, I kind of asked you guys to look at what is what is kind of the what's kind of your big storyline. What's your one thing you're interested to see uh, at this Masters? Maybe uh, Jacques, I'll start with you. I think the new thirteenth tee is going to be interesting to see how the guys the guys play that one. Um, I know that that looks like a really 
daunting tee shot. And it's going to be interesting come Sunday, you know, with the lead. Guys, even if it's someone who's been there before, played it before, you know, having an unfamiliar shot for a change, um, which looks like pretty much hitting down a, a, a mine shaft um, yeah. before you get on the fairway and, and not a huge landing area to, to get to either. So I think the 13th, you know, 12th, which is a uh, historically that tricky par three, followed by a very tricky tee shot. You know, if you see someone maybe drop a shot or two on the 12th, you know, that, uh, that little shoot that you've got to hit down is going to get absolutely tiny. So, so I think, um, you know, I think that could, that, that's, that's really what I'm looking forward to seeing guys hit that tee shot, um, under pressure on Sunday, perhaps having, having bottled it a bit on, on the 12th. Mm. Yeah, I think that that stretch is going to be super interesting because uh, um, the 13th became very, very easy. Um, I'm not sure where it used to rank in terms of easiness, but I mean, yeah, guys were hitting eight, nine irons into that green um, if they if they drove it in the right place. So, um, you're are you right? Back nine on Sunday. That's definitely going to be definitely going to be interesting to watch. Hoff, what's what are you looking at? Um, well, for me personally, personally foremost uh being able to watch like more golf more coverage <laughs> without all the adverts uh always find like it's a bit cringy some of the coverage obviously with the the the, the, the music but um yeah you get to watch more golf which is which is really lacking from a personal point of view and then i mean probably a little bit boring to to say because we've covered so much of it already but the whole the whole live versus PGA aspect is is so spicy. Um, I mean, I just I really really hope that the first couple of days sort of line the stars up and we can see um, you know like a like a Rory being paired with with Patrick Reed or something like that. Um, I really that that that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm I'm looking forward to is is, is seeing a bit of spice. You mean you mean like come Saturday that they could be paired together? Saturday or Sunday or you know, I mean yeah yeah uh, totally. you know there's there's quite a few outspoken guys on on the live side and um, we know that the the most outspoken on the PGA Tour side is 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 Rory McIlroy who seems to be uh, taking on the mantle of self-appointed uh, spokesperson of of all of world golf. Um, so to see to see him paired with some of the guys that he's, you know, had had run-ins with, uh, mostly run-ins on social media, to be honest. But um, to see them paired together will be to be epic, and and I and I hope it produces it actually produces spice. Yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the the, the the live I think this is going to be very interesting. Like um, I I couldn't get over when I looked. Uh, I was I was on golf golf champs earlier. Um, I couldn't get over actually how many lift players are actually in the in the field. I think there's 18 mm. of them. Um, so yeah, and and I mean a lot of them are you you kind of forget about a lot of these guys, you know. I mean I I say that having not watched much live golf, Hoff. So uh, you know I honestly I've forgotten about a guy like Thomas Jackin uh, Neiman, yeah, Thomas you know? Peters. Um, but sure, but I mean guys who were who were you know who who could who could win this thing? I, I, I've even forgotten about them. You know, Neiman, um, obviously Cam Smith, although his his form is kind of a bit questionable. But I mean, he's he's an absolute horse for for that course. Um, Thomas Peters, yeah, and then <laughs> I mean, golf champs itself, just just a sidebar is going to be pretty interesting because you can get. Uh, it's kind of like fucked with their whole yeah, uh, their whole of the like, of like Dustin thing because you. you you can get Brooks Kepka. Uh, let me just check. Brooks Kepka's like a world ranking is like a hundred and something. Like you can literally cover your team just with with him. Um, it's pretty wild. I mean, Louis's world ranking is one hundred and twelve, um, although his form looks looks pretty crap. Oh, there we go. Brooks Kepka is one hundred and eleven. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you could you could you could. It's going to be interesting to see what people do in, in golf champs. Like how who do they who do they back? Because, um, yeah, I agree with you. I think some of these live guys are a bit undercooked. Um, yeah, so my – I do think the live thing is going to be interesting. But honestly, for me, 
what will make I guess what I would want to see the most this weekend would be how how does Rory how does Rory and Jordan Spieth play in like the first two rounds? Because um, if those two guys are are in the mix on the weekend, like it's just like a fascinating like watch. Um, you know, obviously Rory like going for the Grand Slam and like you know his history with the course and just. Just the kind of allure that he has. And then Jordan Spieth is just like very entertaining uh, to watch. And on this golf course, particularly given like his, his history um, with, you know, the wins and the time that he threw it away. And um, yeah, there's just, that could be, and then you add a couple of like, a couple of live protagonists. Like if those two guys are in the mix and we've got a few live protagonists, like it, <laughs> it really could be like, super super fascinating on saturday and sunday so i think those for the for me if those two guys are at the front end and we add in all the other ingredients that that would be epic that would be my my wish um it does look like it's going to be very wet um i saw a, a an early weather forecast it looks like saturday and sunday is just like pissing down with rain so not sure you know how that's going to affect things but um that yeah, I guess it will soften up, soften up the that's course. That's pretty cool though, as long as it doesn't like cause delays. You know, um, if a, if the, yeah, that's what I'm worried some about. Some tough conditions yeah. that that's lacquer, but obviously for us in South Africa, delays are, are pretty ca- catastrophic to our viewing. Um, so but, yeah, unless yeah. they they do what they did when when Tiger won in 2019, was they teed off like four hours that, early. I don't that know if was, you remember. That was that was fantastic. We could watch the whole thing. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I remember we finished at like five in the evening yeah. or something. It was uh, it was incredible. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's let's see what happens. Um, it's looking seriously bleak for South African players eh? um, at Ma- at the Masters. I, I don't ever remember feeling so despondent looking at our lineup. We literally have Louis Schaal and Aldrich Potkita. Who is there because he won the British Am last year? Um, so he, and he's playing as an Am. Um, that's it, guys. Yeah. Well, let's hope, <laughs> let's hope Louis plays well. Seems to at least uh, come into a bit of form in the in the the live event prior to this last one. But um, I, I I did have to to do a bit of research on on Ulrich Potkita and. Um, managed to find an article that, that dealt with eight things you didn't know about Ulrich Potkita. And just to say that, you know, you spent eight things you didn't know about Ulrich Potkita, where number eight is, we believe he is around six feet tall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if that's how much the journalists are picking up about things to know about Ulrich Potkita, I think we're going to be stretching a bit. But yeah, they said two two things that they said in two different ways is that he's from Mossel Bay. So that was two things we didn't know about him in two different points. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I mean, maybe maybe we'll be sitting there paying a lot more attention to the the amateur medal that they that they give. I think they they give one at the Masters as well. So that might be an interesting one to follow. Generally, it's the only amateur that makes a cut. Normally, then goes out and shoots like ten over on the weekend and still gets the prize. Yeah, he look. He's he's a uh, he's definitely the real mm. deal. This this guy. Um, he's he's a he's a big he's a big unit. Apparently, hits yeah, hits hits a solid ball, and uh, he's won like convincingly won uh, you know a number of like kind of obviously high profile local tournaments, um, and then obviously winning winning the British Am. And then I saw the other day that he he competed in like a junior invitational in uh, the state of Georgia uh, and he won that as well, like two weeks ago, uh, which is just down the road from Augusta. So yeah, he's got a bit of form. I mean, obviously I guess it would just be good if he made, made the cuts. Um, and yeah, if he can win the, the, the top Am, that'd be, that'd be cool. Um, what's your take on Louis? I mean, I haven't seen him play. He, Hasn't shown a whole bunch of form much in the last twelve months, as far as I can see. No, that that Stingers team has battled. I mean, if anyone, if anyone's played well, um, it's probably been more Dean Burmester than. Uh, I mean, Grace has fallen off. He he kind of starts well and then sort of falls away. Um, 
you know, Louis has been super disappointing, uh, especially considering he's the captain. And apart from Charles winning that, I think it was the first one, um, where there was pretty much, you know, him versus Laurie Cantor. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we haven't seen much of, of, Big names. of, of Charles after that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's probably the biggest disappointment going into the Masters is, is the quality of, 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 the, of the SA attack going in. Um, you know, got to pretty much put all of our what, eggs in what, the what, I, uh, I what, what I found uh, pretty wild was that um, this legitimately, this could be the last Masters that Louis ever plays. Yeah. Um, he only qualified because he finished uh, the end of the year. He finished 50th in the world, which got him in literally on the number. And his exemptions for winning the British Open are like long done. So, like outside of seeing him in the Open Championship, like unless he he like wins one of these things, like he he as far as I know, he's not qualified for the US Open unless he goes and qualifies. Um, and for the PGA Championships, like we could literally, this could be the last time we see him in like a, a championship, which is pretty wild. I think Jacques, um, Jacques dropped off here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. But, well, hopefully he'll uh, he'll reconnect. But Jod, I, I think it, I think it's sad. And you know, given it's very given sad. the form that he was in a couple of years ago, was it last year even? No, a year before last year. Um, you know, where he was so close and pretty much everything. And he's just fallen off the radar. Um, so two two years ago, 2021, he finished in the top three of every single major. Yeah. As far as I remember. That's the, that's the I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. As, as our flag, like our kind of playing flag bearer, it's been, I was super bleak when I, I honestly, I was very bleak when I saw him go to live. And uh, and it, yeah, and it's just looking even bleaker Look, I think now. the thing the thing um, with Louis was there was always a concern that you know golf wasn't a priority for him really. You know, he had his mm. farming and all of that, and I think Livers maybe been a little bit of a uh, an affirmation of that. You know, um, because he certainly he certainly hasn't performed, which has been yeah super sad. Um, but also, I mean, yeah, Shaw, Shaw was nowhere. So, I mean, that's no surprise, but, but I mean, Brandon Grace has fallen off the radar as well. Yeah. You know, funny, Shaw actually top 10 at the Masters last year. Yeah. I remember he had a, he had <laughs> he, a good run. He, yeah, he, uh, he likes playing. I mean, obviously he likes playing at Augusta. So, um, listen, I'm not going to. Put any of my well in money on on, a, on another top ten this year. No. But, um, I mean, good luck to him. He 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 could be the top SA finisher legitimately, um, which is saying a huge amount about our golf at the moment. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty bleak, man. It's, um, it's yeah. We've after having such a great run for for a while there with you know with guys competing and uh, obviously the few winners that we had. Yeah, I mean. There were um, guys like Brandon Harding. They've fallen off the radar. Dylan Fratelli seems to have gone backwards. Um, you know, George Katsia is nowhere. So yeah, it's a bit sad. But <laughs> but I think uh, I think I think there's like a, there's looks like there's a young generation coming through. Like you say, this Aldrich Portrida. I mean, I don't know much about him, but went onto his his Instagram page and I mean, he's he's definitely a prolific winner. That's for sure. As yeah. Nam obviously yeah exactly so hopefully it translates okay what's your who, just uh, maybe we can run through this briefly who's your who, who do you see in, of the live players finishing in the top 10 i've got two guys um i think i mean i know we said earlier that cam's form is has died off a bit but there's something about that place that that oak likes you know and and he's a he's a big game player. He's a flipping good putter, which is critical at Augusta. So I, I certainly wouldn't bet against Cam being up there. Um, I hope that he is because I, I really like him. And then perhaps a little bit of you know recency bias. You know Brooks coming off off the win last week. Um, I'm not a tremendous fan of Brooks Kepka to be honest. 
Um, but uh, if it rattles a few PGA Tour cages, that'll be that'll be great if it, if if you can. So I say Brooks Kepka, Cam Smith. Yeah, I had um, so I had Patrick Reed and Brooks Kepka. Um, Patrick Reed also obviously likes Augusta, um, and he seems to seems to be rounding into a bit of form. And I think of all the of of all the guys who 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 want to prove a point, I think uh, he'll use some of that to kind of inject into you know. I think he, he'll he'll rise to this kind of occasion where he's got kind of people giving him shit from the crowd and um yeah cam I, I i don't know i honestly it just doesn't seem like he's done a whole bunch um but i agree with you i think he'll i think he'll he'll be there and thereabouts um he just he just the golf course is uh, although with it being so wet i think he if it was like super hot and dry and that i think um I, I would probably definitely have cam up there but with it being very wet it makes it Opens it up to a few more guys, I think, because it'll be a bit softer. I mean, the other guy that um, from Liv that always seems to yeah. do pretty well at Augusta, and he has not been great at Liv, is Mark Leishman. I don't know what it is about Augusta, but that oak is always towards the top. Not necessarily finishing towards the top, but he usually starts well. He's been up there a few times. So you know, I, I, I would say he's probably my black. I don't horse. think he's. Uh, I don't think he's qualified. Really. Yeah. Oh, good heavens. Okay. Um, let me just have a look quickly. No, he's not. He didn't no, qualify. That's sad. Yeah. Sorry for mm. your. Um. Okay. Quick fire. I'm gonna. I'm gonna quick fire these at you, Carl. Um. Who who finishes higher of these guys? Okay. Tiger or Phil? Your. Uh, Phil. <laughs> Sick. It's a big call. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, can Tiger Bison? walk? <laughs> True story. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a fascinating head to head. 100%. Uh, I'm going to be looking at that one on the on the betting. Uh, Bryson or Billy Ho? Bryson. Bryson. He missed the cut last year. Um, I'm going to go Billy Ho with that one. I like Billy Ho. I think he's got a... He's got a better chance. I find there. him frustrating. Okay, to watch. Sandy Lyle or Larry Myers. Oh my goodness! <laughs> my <laughs> word. Uh, Apparently, this is Larry Myers' final okay. Masters. I'm going to go. Uh, he's I'm going to go Sandy Lyle then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going I'm to go with, with Larry Myers. Why not? Um, and then uh, last one: Sergio or Justin Rose. I hope Justin Rose, but I think it'll be Sergio. Okay. I think it'll be Justin Rose. Uh, Sergio finished, almost finished uh, in bottom of the field, I think, uh, this last Look, weekend. I certainly hope it's Justin Rose. I, 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 I really, <laughs> I, I used to be a huge fan of Sergio. I was, you know, super happy when he yeah. won the Masters, but... Since then, he's he's pretty much you know showed his true colours and uh, uh, he has JDB. Um, yeah, I I I can't back that oak anymore. To be honest, he's just a child. I'm I'm totally in that camp, but I I legitimately think Rose is probably playing better golf. I hope so. It'd be good. Um, It'd be good to see him back. I really like Justin Rose. Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of uh, we 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 lost you there for a while, uh, Mr. De Villiers. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. I I did have my I did have my phone on life support. It was attached to my computer, but I think the the juice coming through my computer wasn't wasn't enough to to counteract the juice that was getting spent on on this app. No, cool. Um, we're uh, we we just kind of rounded out our our masters talk. Um, or let, let me ask you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna fire these at you. Who's gonna finish higher, Tiger or Phil? <laughs> oh, uh, Tiger. There we go. Bryson or Billy Ho? Bryson. Sandy Lyle or Larry <laughs> Myers? <laughs> you gotta pick one. <laughs> Oof, Sandy Lyle. Yo, it's a bit of a Sandy Lyle fan club going on uh, going on here. And then Sergio and Justin Rose. 
Sergio. Although Justin Rose is playing some good golf. Um, but so Sergio, well, half you know better than I do. He's played some. Uh, looks like he's played some pretty good good golf on on live. Pretty inconsistent. Um, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so maybe he'll be almost there last Rose. this last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, just cover yourself. Right, right. Cover yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sounds like you're taking Sergio Rose in that one. Um, <laughs> what's uh, what's happening with your golf game, Jock? Um, yeah, it's a bit all over the show at the moment. Um, uh, I'm still battling uh, the overswing, which means it's it's. Uh, yeah, it, it's tough to tough to pull it back. I think Hoff always says that he's amazed that I can still manage to get the club uh, square through impact with with how long the, the backswing is. Um, but played monthly mug uh, on Saturday and had a pretty decent round. I think what was interesting was to watch my brother, who's a twelve handicap, be three under after five holes in monthly mug and then just slow <laughs> car crash his way to an eighty five. Oh wow! After being three under after five. Um, but yeah, otherwise not in bad shape. Um, pretty consistently shooting in the 80s, um, but haven't broken 80 for a while. And, and sort of, I'm shooting in the 90s when it's pretty horrific conditions. But but thankfully haven't gone out there in a in a perfect day for a while and shot over 90. Yeah, that might change when that when that kid arrives. <laughs> yeah, so I've been told. Although my although my dad did say that he was gonna. I must take photos of my golf cart so that he can fashion a, a baby seat carrier on the back of it. So, yeah. so I said that would be a fantastic, uh, Keepers, fantastic not a, not, gift. Not a fantastic oh, totally. gift to yeah. the guys playing with you. Or on the next fairway <laughs> or on the green <laughs> in front or the tee box behind. Yeah, you might you might be pulling off at the fifth hole and, uh, and uh, pulling into your garage <laughs> and dropping that cargo off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I mean, with all the building, we were just laughing with all the building that's and alterations that's going on. Yeah, you know, we're not, we're not going to be bathing the baby. We're just going to be dusting the baby. <laughs> so full of building that building dead. Half, do you still play golf or have you sold your clubs and you're just playing paddle now? No, I haven't played for a while, I must say. I, I needed to let my love of the game uh, revive a bit. Uh, I felt like I was pretty, pretty defeated. Uh, for a while in 2023 especially um, but the good news is, yeah. is that I've purchased a putting mat uh, uh, aid so that should help my putting so Jacques will be happy with that and then I'm eyeing out one of those yellow things that you put on your wrists so that that's gonna <laughs> <laughs> oh that's gonna revolutionize yeah, that, everything that'll, yeah. that'll change yeah. everything if, the, if there's one if there's one thing that Hoff needs, it's just another swing thought. So I'm yeah. glad you're getting all these aids, just so that you've got about 100 swing thoughts going through yeah, there every exactly. time you pull the club back. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been pretty horrific, to be honest, um, uh, since the last time I played well, which was about a year ago. But uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. I think, I think uh, the Masters coverage will, will help. And time heals all wounds, so I'll forget how absolutely horrendous I am at this game and go out there and, you know, try and shoot another 108. And if, and if not time, then a whole lot of pro shop vouchers also does the trick sometimes. Oh, yeah, well. no, look, the, 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 spend, the spending <laughs> hasn't stopped. Um, uh, oh, so, that's good. I mean, you know, to be, yeah. to be an expert in brands, you've got to, you've got to keep, keep, keep on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you've got to keep abreast with, with all the technology, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, well, on my side, I must say, I've had, um, I've had like a very uh, weird switch around in my in my game. Last year, I could not hit my driver, or my short game was just was just in the doldrums. And I was hitting my irons pretty well. And then this year, pretty much every round I've played, um, I'm, 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 I found something with the driver and the short game is, is kind of coming back a bit, but I I've literally can't remember how to hit an iron. Like, it's just gone. Like, it's it's so bad. It's uh, it's it's terrible. Yeah, it's it's very demoralizing because th there's a lot more irons in your bag than, than, than you realize. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what, what number's on the back. <laughs> you have to hit one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anything lower than a P. If it's got an actual number written on it, then we're in we're in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> the lettered irons are okay. Uh, yeah. 
So, and, and Terence, have you got any 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 other um, videos coming out? No, not. I, I need to. Uh, I need to get the drone uh, airborne, um, and we need to get. We need a, a golf tour or something like that. Um, yeah, we're we're a little thin on the content side at well, the moment. Well, I, so yeah. Well, I'm just upset that the, the the video that you had of of Cathedral Peak didn't have me hitting that uh, seven iron into the green. I, I, I thought that was a very strategic uh, editing on your part. Yeah, no, don't worry. That's um, that's coming. That's that's in the the content pipeline. Um, Sixty that <laughs> grin you had on your face after that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was like a kid who had found some sweets in, in, uh, where his parents had hid the sweets <laughs> in the cupboard. Um, is, there, is, there, is there any other sport happening besides the Masters this weekend that, that we should uh, care about? I can't think of anything, honestly. It, Hoff did make a 5,000 Rand bet when he was drunk at half past 12 that him and I would beat uh, uh, a mate of mine and a partner of his choosing, which... Upon reflection, Hoff was probably not the well, last. Well, you got to give it some more background. I mean, it's it was a bet in pedal, so I actually stand by that bet. A pedal, okay. Um, I think I think. Uh, Are you still? I think we odds on there, to be honest. When when is the game? Uh, it's got to be within <laughs> six months. Um, so he he needs oh, okay. to he this other like, needs to choose a partner and uh, and then let us know, and then we'll we'll be ready. Ready on a dam, so uh, I think it's a great bet to be honest, and we'll we'll give feedback on the next episode, whether we've taken it home or Don't dug into think... our pockets. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to get uh, we need to get together for some paddle pretty soon. Um, I've been uh, my paddle is better than my golf at the moment for sure. So. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, your, your golf's not terrible, so I'm, I'm excited to I'm, see the paddle uh, game. I'm ready to come challenge you guys up the uh, up the hill. So um, we need to get lock and lock that in. I need to find a partner. Um, I was just about to say, do you have a do you have a regular partner, or or, or do you do I you do. sort of I'll, I'll see, play with I'll his? I'll see there. if he's willing to travel. I'll 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 see. Or, or we can meet. Uh, we can meet halfway, maybe. I was going to say we can uh, we can we can make a plan to play you at your home court. I think uh, Hoff and I have travelled all the way to Cape Town okay. to play some paddle matches. So, we'll set so up. We'll, 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 we'll make a trip to Belize. We'll set up a, maybe a home and away uh, little uh, uh, fixture. How about that? League. Definitely a series. And cool guys. Well, I think let's wrap it up. Um, I think we've done well. Um, I think this is probably going to probably definitely shoot into the top 10 um, on Apple Podcasts. Um, <laughs> that means at least 10 people are probably going to listen to it, which includes the three of us um, and both of your dogs. Um, but hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can touch base maybe next week and, and do a bit of a Masters uh, uh, post, post-mortem. Yeah, yeah, 100%. This, um, has been, this has been super fun. Um, in talking smack about golf. We can... Pretty much. If we, if, what's our target for quitting uh, our jobs? Uh, uh, Two years. I, I did have a. <laughs> I, I must say, I did have Two a look half. at. Um, I, I look at that. I did have a look at Euphoria post my my comments about uh, it being fifty five. It actually looks pretty yeah. awesome. Um, designed by Anna Kasurinstam. So, yeah, that that's. Uh, I, I take it back. It looks I, amazing. Keen to mm. go and play there. No, I think we must put it on the short list. All right, gents, we'll uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy the Masters. We will uh, catch up next week. Good stuff. Thanks, boys.